What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five, I'm Anna Eric Sheets Haber. We are back, and we have not been together for a recording in a, in a little while. So Sheets had a nice little vacation and a birthday yesterday. Unfortunately, the, the DFS results didn't match the uh, the rest of the positivity. <laughs> um, well, it have, you know, it would have helped if Kuzma missed that freaking ridiculous three. Yeah. Um, um, and, 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 and I heard, like, my, my son was giving me play-by-play. -play. Apparently, and I, I could be wrong about this, maybe you weren't watching or whatever, but but, you know, I needed, obviously, the Bulls to go to overtime, and they were down three with the ball at five seconds to go, and Matt was trying to give me play-by-play, -play, and he says, all right, they in, hmm, like, what? He's like, I don't know what happened, but they gave it to Levine, and he, like, like drove in and missed, like, a two for some reason. I don't oh, know what God. he was actually doing. Oh, God, I've seen him do that before, too. I don't know exactly. He must have not thought, but he must not have known the score. I mean, like, honestly. Yeah, There's literally no other explanation. I he mean, does like, it all the time. No, he does that though. He'll, he'll they'll take he'll take the quick two like with two seconds left. I've seen him do it a few times. Anyway, it's very frustrating. Um, so that is tilting. But uh, but anyway, but it sounds like everything else is going good for you. And before yep. we jump in the slate, anything else you want to touch on? Nope, ready to go. Let's do it. All right. Why don't we call up your screen and we are going to go game by game here. Um I, I have been on a little bit of a downswing and it's really weird because like about a, about a week ago, even when things were going poorly, I really felt pretty tapped in. I just couldn't get the right plays and the right mixes. Now I'm just like, just sort of whiffing on some things. Well, so I'm well really you know what? You got a nice, easy one game slate tonight that, that, that we can, think you, so? you know, that we can figure out. And then, you know, it's a nice, easy, instructive slate. I'm not to say we're necessarily going to win, but it's, in the, you know, there, there's, you have, you have Duran out, you know what I mean? And, and it's uh it's a uh, it's, it's an easy it's an easy slate to at least look at as far as like my sheets go. I mean, I see like like seven Brooklyn guys in the top eight of my values, and I'm just trying to figure out which which Celtic guy to run it back with, you know, or if not more than one. Um, so that's 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 my overall quick quick view of the slate. But let's take it game by game and see if we can't find better you know other good plans. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. Let's start with uh, OKC Philly. Uh, I'll just jump into this one real quick. I see nothing as being a priority for me here. I just want to point out that what we keep, and, and yes, it happens far less often. Yes, and all, you know, all these things. But Josh Giddy basically has a very similar, if not the same ceiling as Shea. Now he's going to hit it less often, all these things. And this, this, I just can't get over how many times this year I've, I've, I've gotten myself in trouble playing Shea. And then Giddy goes off for like 58, like he did the other night or whatever it was. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to give you a, I'm going to give you a quiz. So, in the last game, Giddy was at Miami, and Miami was missing, you know, all the guys, right? Right. And so, you, you know what I like to do. I'll play the Miami guys, and I'll run it back with, with, with probably more OKC guys than, you know, you're probably supposed to, but whatever. So, so I played, I played Josh Giddy in that, in on that, on that slate. Did a, did it did actually okay? You want to take a guess on what ownership Josh Giddy was at? 7100. I played him. He was he was he was 1%. He was 0.8% owned <laughs> in in some tournament. And the, the big right. guy was 1.9%. Right. I remember because I posted it the other night, but yeah. um but yeah, pretty pretty wild. Um but as far as this game goes, like a bunch of plays seem fine to me. The only thing that I would consider as a priority possibly is Embiid or Harden, but probably probably Embiid. Um, and I don't feel like that's even a must. I actually think that, you know, Maxi's price is, makes him a great tournament play, but like, I don't really feel like anybody here is somebody that I need to have, uh, as of right now, I might revisit the MD as my tops, as one of my top spend ups. And I might revisit the Harden and Maxi thing. Um, maybe Dort or Jalen Williams, but nobody who's standing out as like a must play for me. Yeah. I like, uh, I like Embiid. Um, you know, if, if you're not going to play, if you're not going to play Luca um, uh, at twelve eight, which is you know it's never easy to play anybody at twelve eight, um, I, I like Embiid quite a bit here at eleven thousand. Um, again, it depends on how you want to deal with the Brooklyn's um, and all that stuff. But uh, I, I like him. I, I Harden is just my my kryptonite. You know, whenever I play him, he's just struggles. Then when I forget to not forget to play him, I don't play him. He has triple double in the first half you know it's it's a it's it's a little struggle but I, I would play one of those you know listen I could play one of those two I don't think I I think Embiid is probably more of a priority for me than Harden is yeah um and then on the OKC side I mean I don't think either of them are going to be owned uh 
Gid- I have Giddy and Shay both. I actually have Giddy as higher owned than Shay right now. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah, Shay is not going to be owned. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it just doesn't, doesn't seem like the best use of 10,000 tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's just kind of where I'm, I'm Again, uh, nothing particular earth shattering from this game. Just going to be Embiid, maybe hard, and, and that's probably it. Yeah, this leads me to – I want to point out just one quick thing about, like, uh, just about the Shea thing. It was a cool play when he was 9K, guys, like, and there were some games that Giddy missed even. Like, this guy has put up 50 fantasy points one time in his last, what, nine games? Just 50. And even that was 51. Like, Giddy's at – Giddy's at – I mean, like, he has a higher range of outcomes, but, like, it just feels weird – that that I feel like I feel like Shea gets talked about, and I feel like this happens with a lot of guys. We like playing them at a certain price, and then the price goes up, and then they're like he's one thousand less than Embiid, and then we end up playing him. And he, I just don't want to, you know, I, I want to try to 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 snuff those out and and, and get away from that. Um, just in general, I don't think he's going to be popular tonight or anything, which is generally the best reason to play him. But just probably worth noting that he's basically you're about ninety five percent of the time not getting there. Um, all right. Uh, maybe that's too high. Ninety percent. All right, Cheats. What do you got on the next one? Uh, Miami, Milwaukee. Uh, what, what What are your thoughts on this one? What I have on this one is that my my projections are broken. I I I uh, I for some reason don't even have this game. <laughs> oh well, that's weird. I don't know what to tell you. Okay. And I presume that there's going to be stuff that you want to do here. Um, yeah, for sure. I don't know what it is. I don't know why. I don't know who who which of my models dropped the ball on this one. So I'm gonna have to redo this one. But I'm going to presume the uh, analysis is the same as always uh, for Miami. We got to see who's playing. Um, Butler had a freaking pretty hyper efficient game in his last game. I mean, he was uh, he went he went off. Um, but is it going to be another game where what's his name? Uh, if Bam sits again, for example, oh he's probable, so he's going to play. So Bam, so we're not going to have to deal with probably Robinson. All right, so maybe it's not that bad. But without uh, Lowry and uh, Hero, I guess Oladipo is going to be decent again. And then uh, on the other side, uh, back to back. But boy, so is, is Giannis going to rate it? Giannis I imagine Giannis. Giannis, Giannis right? Right. I'd be very surprised if Giannis played. Okay. Even Why are the Heat? Yeah, do you think you want to get up for that game? Somehow the Heat are for this one? No, I don't think you. I think you think of the Heat as very different. The Heat are like five hundred, not even five hundred. I don't think. They're just in general, just the Heat. or just about. Yeah, but I don't, I don't see. And, and Giannis's worst games in history have always been in Miami. Um, I, I would be shocked if he plays, considering the Heat are three and a half point favorites in a the game. They usually be about seven or eight point underdogs. I know it's a back to back, but there's no way that they're assuming that con- that that Giannis and Holiday play. I wouldn't be surprised if Holiday. I mean, if Holiday sat or Giannis sat, but I think that it's possible that you could see. I don't think both, but it, it's not a, it's not out of the realm of possibility. Um, so we'll probably have that news early enough either way. And that'll make this the game stack. That, that that's why I, I didn't agree with the one game slate. Yeah, um, well, because it's the one game because I don't have this game. I literally don't have it. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think that, you know, get, I think, I think you know, Gabe Vincent and Oladipo are both in play. I think you could split those guys up. Um, there, there's going to be some minutes for Haysmith or Kane. Um, I don't know really if I want to do anything with that yet, but they only have nine bodies and one of them is Udonis Haslam. And that's assuming that Bam plays, which he's going to play, I assume. Um, it says he's probable. So you're basically talking about eight, eight man rotation against a really fast paced team. Um, probably won't be as fast paced if you don't have Giannis and Drew Holiday, but the low total and the, the Miami being favored by three and a half uh, definitely has me thinking something or actually, excuse me, four. I, I would be shocked it, well, Vegas at least is is guaranteeing that one of those guys sits because that is that is not a line you would ever see. I think I mean I really it, it's like it really stands out. So I was going to ask you about that. What the what that line is looking like? Yeah, it's kind of it's crazy. I mean, I'm, I I can't even I know back to back, but like that's you know I I, I just am really surprised to see it. Um, and then we're, we're just going to have to sift through what we want to do with Milwaukee when we when we find out what that news is. And it could be wrong. Vegas, sometimes, you know, this, this spread could swing by seven points, which would be kind of wild in the day. But, uh, I mean, I, Miami being favored over anybody feels like a reach a little bit to me. I mean, they are not – this is not the same Miami team. Um, and they have nine bodies. They're missing two of their best four players. Um, 
I, I, this is probably a game stack that we, we really can't touch on that much until we know who or what's happening with Milwaukee, unfortunately. Uh, what what happened with Milwaukee? Yes, was it, it, was, it was, they beat Atlanta, they played Atlanta, right? Yeah, they won. They beat them. Yeah. Um, and what's name was good? Uh, who? Uh, Holiday. Yeah, he was good. He was good. It was a frustrating game because uh, the Atlanta side couldn't get the right pieces. I did have a lot of Bogdanovich and no DeJounte lineups, which is why I won some tickets, but like it wasn't, uh, wasn't quite, it didn't quite work out the way I wanted it to, obviously um, with just the ultimate nut low game from DeJounte Murray. Right. Um, all right. Uh, let's see what else, what else do you got? Anything else from this one? I mean, I don't think we can really do much without, without information. No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and it is speculative on my part a little bit, but there's no like actual Q tags in there right now. But when Vegas tells you that, it's you kind of have to like think there might be something to it. Um, That's an actual line. It's Miami minus three and a half. Yeah. No, four. It, it doesn't feel right. Even still, I mean, yeah. With 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 nine guys, eight eight actual guys. Well, and of those nine guys, four of them are centers. Like it's really weird. Well, I mean, you know, listen, uh, Gabe Vincent at 4K. I mean, if, if uh, yeah, all those guys are out, he's going to be fine. I mean, he's he's the guy I have rated. I mean, I got just to give a quick update. And 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 Aladipo and Struess for Miami. But again, the Milwaukee is. Um, who, who's going to who's going to pop? You're going to get Ma, Ma, Marjan Beauchamp. You know, these are these are again, we're just have some fun. These are names that you might end up hearing. Marjan Beauchamp, Connaughton. Connaughton might might end up be, being a play anyway. Um, but again, we're just completely speculating. Yeah, it's it's really hard on the back. I mean, you could see Brooke Lopez, Bobby Portis might end up being one of the best plays in the slate by the end of the day. But Beauchamp is probably going to be. Um, Grayson Allen's also questionable, so you might lose multiples of these guys. We're really just going to have to see see how it shakes out because there are guys who are projected for zero fantasy points right now that may end up being the best plays on the slate. <laughs> um, by the time it's over, if, if they if they really sat a bunch of guys, um, and if I were them, I would sit Giannis in Miami. He had, he cannot play in Miami for some reason. He always has the worst. Yeah, game. What is that? Oh, it's the Miami flu. It's the partying the night before, but he didn't have. Do you think that's that's a Giannis thing? Oh, it's, I mean, I can tell you for sure. It's happened every time he's played there. It's like weird satellites. Like our, we went to a game there a couple of years ago and he was like, he had like nine points and five rebounds. Like, oh, really? like he was like asleep on the court. It was like, how did this even happen? Um, for what it's worth, Giannis didn't really, you know, it wasn't really, I guess he was whatever. Anyway, I, I do, I do. I, I think we're just going to have to revisit this one at six. I just can't figure out what to do with it right now. All right, let's talk about the, uh, the next one, because I, th- I think I think it is going to be the best game stack if if you lose those guys, just because limited bodies with no Giannis if or or Holiday even at least there's going to be some opening for a potential game stack. So I'm going to keep look back at that one. Um, next up, you have Toronto uh, Charlotte, and this is I always like they just played this game. I, I do like these like playing these Charlotte guys, the, I'm sorry, Toronto guys, because you have you know the new Thibodeau Nick Nurse, which basically just plays his guys a million minutes, and. Everybody looks looks pretty solid to me. I, I don't mind going back to Siakam at what I think might be low ownership today um, because the matchup is just too pure. Um, they didn't play great the other night. And I, I just, I don't know, I feel like playing, you know, one one of these Raptors and, and they're all rating fair, fairly similarly. I, I think that I have it, I actually have it flipped a little bit based on the projections than the projections do. I have Siakam. And I think maybe you could do something like that with the Siakam and Bead lineup if we get enough value today. But then I have Scotty Barnes, uh, Fred Van Vliet, Anna Newby, and Gary Trent. And I think all of those guys are, are totally reasonable tournament plays. Um, I did play a little bit of the Terry Rozier the other night who went off, which was nice in this matchup. I would take another shot with Terry Rozier. I think he's at a reasonable price. I don't like this matchup for LaMelo, but some people will play him. Okay. Um I think PJ Washington at 5,500 is reasonable, but nothing that really stands out as being amazing. The one thing that could be, um, Cody Martin should be getting his minutes back a little bit more, but for the most part from Charlotte, it's mostly going to be Rogier, or I'd like to get another initiator. So I would like ball, but uh, but I don't think that it's, I just don't like the matchup for him. So I think it's Rogier and Washington is my favorites for uh, for Charlotte. Yeah, I have Cody Martin as a flat 3K being a you know good point per dollar play. As you know, listen, you got a guy that's 3K that's going to play 20 plus minutes. He's going to he's going to project for 15 plus fantasy points. He's going to show up. You know, it's that's just what it's going to be. Um, 
Lamelo at 9,800. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that would, that'd be nice. Uh, Siakam and Scotty Barnes and Van Fleet. I like all three of those. So mm-hmm. maybe, um, maybe you can do something here. Uh, maybe, may, maybe you, you overspend for Lamelo. Maybe not, maybe it's not even an overspend. Maybe you play Lamelo with Van Vliet, um, and get a little stack going here. I actually don't mind this. Yeah, it's it, really weird when you look at LaMelo's minutes. Um, he, he he plays, like, once the game is basically out of hand, that's what they usually, they, like, often bring him back in when they're down 20 in with, like, four minutes to go over and over again. And they're not, like, really trying to rally back. It's like, I feel like a lot of his his fantasy production is completely puff stuff. Um, but, so it's always hard when I try to look back and see his minutes in certain games and whatnot, but... I just I just want to reemphasize that Rozier has been pretty great lately, and I think we should should, should really strongly consider him if you want to if you want to uh, play this game. Uh, if you're playing somebody from Toronto, I think Rozier and PJ Washington are very good runbacks. All right, um, what do we got next? I have uh, the Boston Brooklyn game. Okay, so now we have the the Brooklyn situation. So TJ Warren. Uh, Seth Curry is going to look like a play. I'd rather play TJ Warren than Seth Curry, but I'm totally good with Curry. Um, Kyrie is obviously going to be a strong play that looks like a, a great play. And it's also not to mention it would be nice if it was in Boston because the little Boston revenge thing has worked out pretty well for me with him so far. Um, I think that all of these guys, I mean, like Ben Simmons uh, would probably be my next favorite. And after that, I think you go Claxton. The problem is one of these wings outside of Warren could end up getting there. Is like, like, like if you have Warren and a bunch of lineups, mix in some Royce O'Neal, you know, mix in some Joe Harris or Seth Curry. But I actually think it's more Curry than than Harris. But I think you're you're looking at playing probably a couple guys from Brooklyn and a good portion of lineups because Boston is on a back to back. Um, and even if they, you know, keep it like if it, as long as Brooklyn keeps it reasonably close, these the, the production to go around is just. It's incredible. Um, and on the on the Boston side, I don't really have like I think Marcus Smart will play tonight because he sat last night and he's been out, but I, he's he's legit, he's legit questionable. But Marcus Smart, um, and then we won't we, we may not have Brogdon on the back to back. We may have him. It's always up in the air. So just keep an eye out for their guards. I don't really have anybody who jumps out the page for me, uh, for Bo- for Boston. But maybe after after it was a Jalen Brown night last night, you could throw Tatum in if you wanted to get a little stack going because I do think you'd want to play multiple guys from Brooklyn. Yeah, I mean, I think that makes the most sense. I think that's pure. Um, I just threw it. I just threw the six Nets who I think are kind of in play here. I just, mm-hmm. um, and then uh, you don't. I don't, wouldn't play six of them, but you know, you play three of them, and then. Uh, run it back with either Tatum or, or Brown. I, you know, like you said, who, who, who had the game last night, Brown? Yeah. I mean, you can play a little rec- recency bias thing and play, play Tatum this time. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it makes sense. I mean, we'll, I guess we could talk through this a little bit or any guys on the nets, like guys you wouldn't want to play together. Um, it's weird. Like when I look at this, I don't. You know, I don't rotation that's never been played before, so it's really hard to 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 get. Yeah, because like instinctively, it doesn't seem like it's a big deal. Like like because like who actually does what Ben Simmons does? Like kind of nobody, right? Uh, I guess I T.J. Think- Warren and Seth Curry might be competing for shots. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't I I I I don't I don't feel like there's there's a way I can really speculate on it because we've never seen anything like it before. Right. So I don't really know where, where to go with it. Even like Joe Harris's minutes projection are basically the same as they've been. And he I mean I, I'm not still saying play Joe Harris, but but suddenly but but suddenly we're gonna be giving Seth Seth Curry the bump because he's had a couple games in the 20s lately. Could be Joe. Like I'm just saying, like it, it and one thing about them that's gonna make this a little bit tougher is you might see like maybe not a different starting lineup, but you might see some guys play who you're just not, you know, used to see like Edwin Sumner might get minutes. They have a ton of bodies. They have a ton of guys they can use. That's the one thing that's scary about Brooklyn. So you better hope this game stays close if you, you know, play Brooklyn. And I think it should, I think there's a good chance it will second end of back to back for, for Boston, a game they should get up for. I can get, I can get talking to, to, to four of these guys, the Curry, uh, Kyrie Curry, uh, maybe like a Simmons and Warren with uh, Tatum on the other side. I think that's completely reasonable. 
And, oh, and by the way, if not Tatum, why not Marcus Smart, the only guy who didn't play last night? If he does play, I would I would go that direction. So I would say Smart or Tatum being my favorite. And it's also going to depend on what what kind of stuff we get from the uh, the Milwaukee game because I'm just telling you that spread you don't usually see stuff like that and and it not means somebody's out. I'm actually surprised that the sites aren't aren't accounting them for being out because of that. All right, um, we get to talk about my Lakers. She's I'm gonna let you start this one off. Yeah. So um, I wanted to ask you how it worked out the other day for you because I played the Lakers with, you know, with Westbrook and all the other guys. And I saw that you had played some Kendrick Nunn. I, I don't know if you played him, but you put him in like your builds or something like that. I don't know if you ended up actually playing him. I was wondering how he ended up doing. I didn't really check that. Um, let's just see who's in. So Reeves remains out. Um, he, had tw- he had 24, by the way. For oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, Troy Brown Jr. is probable. Walker remains out. Wonder how, how many minutes did Gabriel get against the against Jokic? He, they, the nineteen. That's what he's going to get. Um, Those are all going to be cut. I mean, with Troy Brown coming back, the, all the other pieces are not as interesting. Yeah, Bryant got what what we thought thirty eight minutes. So I yell. You know, I'm going to ask you if you like uh, LeBron. Seems like seems like a good LeBron game. I mean, I don't know. It's not the greatest pace game in the world, but you think you'd get up for a Luka game? Uh, seems to make sense. Um, sure, because he, he he just sits all the time, like, um, yeah, that, that, and, it's bad, and it's a slow down matchup. Um, but he's like fine, you know what I mean? Like him versus Embiid, I'd have to be kind of crazy if I would play him over Embiid. I think. I guess um, so. It just feels like like an insane play. Like LeBron has to like be incredibly efficient and decide to go nuts just to get to where Embiid gets to like every night. <laughs> so I guess, so I guess the game is a pass then. I mean, I don't know. I don't want to play 12 eight for anybody. I'll play Luca. Um, yeah. I have no problem with playing Luca today. It's pretty easy. Like, you know what I mean? And it's, 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 it, and the truth is I could make an argument for everybody on Dallas. Um, <laughs> I, I'm excited about this game. Like, I mean, that I, the Lakers have been really good when they, it, it, it's kind of annoying to me that like LeBron sat at home the last game. Like, I mean, I understand the age thing, but like, and then other guys are talking about how LeBron's turning the Lakers around. I'm like, the Lakers just won two games without him. They they went two and one without him, including like beating the Heat, who they just got smoked by with LeBron. Like it just doesn't like I don't know. I feel like he gets credit even when he doesn't play for for the wins. And Westbrook somehow still gets criticized. Meanwhile, he's leading his team almost single handedly along with Dennis Schroeder to, to victories. Um, so that's just more of my own personal pet peeve. Um, I do think Westbrook would be in play again. I don't care whether LeBron plays or not. I think they figured out pretty clearly that they, there's no reason for Westbrook to ever be in the 20s minutes wise. Like this guy does everything. He's also been your best plus minus guy on the season. Um, it's just sort of baffling to me that he, you know, the way that, that things are being treated. So I Westbrook would be the, the closest thing to a run back I have. I, do, I mean, Thomas Bryant, the price is getting up there, but I do think there's this, you know, he's, he's active and he's a part of things and, and he's got a ceiling of, of, of over 40, but I'm probably not going to get, I mean, well over 40, but I'm not going to get to him. I think it's just Luca for me. Although I wouldn't fault anybody for Hardaway or Wood. I just am not getting there myself. All right. I think I, in the last game, I think, I think I like to compare different prices. I think I like Garland more than, um, than say Drew Holiday. Uh, I think I like Garland more than Rogier. Um, so if you get to that range, um, I think I recommend uh, Garland here. I, he's not getting that much ownership either. I mean, a 10%. Um, so uh, I, I like that. What else stands out? I mean, you could always play Mitchell, but 10K is tough. You know, it, it always is, especially on a huge slate. So I just, I think I prefer Garland on the Cleveland side. And on Portland, Nurkic again. I mean, sixty eight hundred. It seems seems pretty reasonable. How did he do? How did he do in his last game? Um, he did just fine. <laughs> he just did forty five. What plus three games in a row? It's not bad. Yeah, be really careful though, because they they. I mean, like he didn't. What's what's sort of hidden in that is that they didn't play him during crunch time for the most part. Okay. Um, he only played thirty one minutes. And the, the what he what he has working for him is he's got the worst matchup in basketball, yeah. but he's also got that means he's that means his minutes are probably more secure. So it's it's sort of a, a pick which which one you want, you know what I mean? So it's kind of an interesting 
it's an interesting like little conundrum. If he was, if he looked like a better play to me, I would, I would be, I would probably do that. But he's, you know, no, I see, I see, see, Lillard's questionable. Um, obviously, that's that's worth monitoring. Um, I mean, if he's out, then it's Simons and everybody. Um, question: uh, sprained ankle, hasn't missed a game. It says here in since December third. Um, yeah, maybe I'm, like, I'm guessing he'll play at home, but I'm just guessing. I imagine. I mean, hopefully we get that. Uh, yeah, some, some reason. <laughs> what's uh, what's what's uh, what's uh, Simon's eight K? Seven sixty-five. Sixty-five. So he's going to be like, you can, probably won't be able to fade him if Lowers out. Um, I wouldn't um, imagine. Um, I mean, you can for sure because you could. You there, there's they have other guys like Jeremy Grant. Uh, Josh Hart. These guys have actually all been pretty productive, and uh, but I, but I would probably. I mean, I, I would probably prioritize him, but I don't think that you, you like uh, you like Garland. Um, not especially. Okay. I I, I I like him less than all the other guys you made, except for Drew, Drew Holiday. Um, Garland has put up over forty fantasy points one time in his last nine games. Um, it's Donovan Mitchell's team, but look, there's always going to be that shift where it's Garland, you know, goes off, but. It's just there's nothing there, there's nothing to, to to glean from through, and these are these are good matchups too. You had the one out that the one crazy game against Brooklyn where he couldn't miss, and that's sort of like what you're betting on. So, I, I just it's hard to bet on a guy not missing at all. Um, I do think that Mobley and Jared Allen are both really strong plays uh, on the other side of this game, uh, especially Mobley for me. So I, I will get some of that, um, and. I'm not going to do the Donovan Mitchell. I just will throw out that Kevin Love, you know, he's from he's from the Portland area. He he always has good games back there. I don't think it's going to matter tonight. If you need somebody down, but I just I always look for the little narrative things. So I'm I'm sort of keeping an eye on that. I'm also keeping an eye on when Gary Payton is going to start getting more run. He might end up being a, a good like a really good play one of these days and and sneak up on us because I I know they want to get him more involved, but they're sort of bringing him along slowly. The problem is they need to start winning games. Um, Cause they're, they're sort of falling into Laker land right now in terms of their record. So yeah, I think, I think Mobley would probably be my favorite from this game um, with the, Mobley or Allen, I think are both fine. And, and I think you could throw Nurkic in the mix. Um, I, I just don't think that it's going to be a priority for me in this really, really tough matchup. But the, but like I said, when my, when my worry is minutes, well, now I know at least he's on the court, right? You know what I mean? Right. And and, yeah. and and while they'll have some Eubanks out there, they won't leave him out there all the time. Also, one thing to keep in mind that's another problem for Nurkic, he gets, just gets in foul trouble a lot. So, right. So, so I, I've got my priorities on this slate as being probably two or three from Brooklyn at the moment, but it could be just two if, if the, you know, the Milwaukee game opens up. I think you're playing like from the Heat. I think that whether it's Vincent Oladipo or Jimmy Butler, I think that all of those three guys are are, are in very different ways good plays. I think it's worth speculating on some Highsmith or Jamal Kane. Um, I think that Milwaukee, if they end up sitting anybody, we're going to want some runbacks there. So Milwaukee, Miami, and Boston, Brooklyn are my favorite game stacks. And, uh, you know, I like Embiid as a spend up. The more I look through this slate, I like Jokic as my next favorite spend up as of right now. Um, I'm sorry, uh, Doncic <laughs> as my second favorite spend up right now. And, yeah, it's going to be deciding between some of these these pieces, these other pieces. And my favorites for the cheapos right now being T.J. Warren followed by Seth Curry. Um, and I think we're just going to get better value later than for me to ma- mention any other names, really. <laughs> so yeah, once again, we're going to have to see. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's 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 one of those, you know, it's, it's we have the time sheets where right after New Year's, it's kind of beautiful because like the games start happening, but they haven't played in a while. So everybody's putting their best effort out there. You know, who's going to play. There's not that much. And it's right after new year's for like five days. And then it goes back to mayhem. <laughs> which right. I'm sure we'll get tonight. Anyway. Uh, good to have you back, man. Good to, good to be back doing the show with you. Hopefully this, uh, this full day of, 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 of stuff will allow, allow me to at least catch up with a little bit of the money I lost over the last couple of weeks. And uh, good luck to everybody else out there today. All right. So-